So as we start our, our new concepts inside of After Effects, I want to segue from 2D into what some people call 2.5D. I like to call it faux 3D. We're going to talk about 3D layers in After Effects today. And we're going to set up a fake 3D environment, and then we're going to use fake lighting and fake cameras to completely work inside of that fake 3D environment. Um, this is a really fun a really fun concept to learn because it allows us to take our worlds that we make in 2D and then to layer them in, in Z space. Again, Z space is, is depth. It's from me to the camera as opposed to flat two dimensional, which is just the Y axis and the X axis. Z space introduces depth. And so if we can then layer our After Effects files in Z space, we could take a fake camera and kind of fly through that scene that we've made. So I have some files for you on Canvas. If you guys head on over to Canvas, you will see something called Download 3D Room Assets. It's a zip file. Go ahead and open that up, download that, and then unzip or extract all those files so you can get those imported into After Effects, which I've done here. It's a brick wall, a brick wall with a window, some candlestick mounts, a fire pit, and a forest. We're gonna make kind of a, a brick walled environment. So get those important After Effects, and then go ahead and just watch me real quick because I wanna demo what it is we're gonna be working on. I'm gonna make a new composition that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. Uh, the duration is irrelevant. As long as it's at least 10 seconds, that's fine. I'm gonna call this Shaded Ball. And to show you guys what 3D layers do and how they accept lights, I'm just gonna draw a very basic circle here. I'm gonna fill this with blue. Okay, nothing crazy about this. It is literally just using my ellipse tool and I drew a circle. Now, what if I wanted to make this look like a 3D shaded ball? Well, I wanna to introduce to you guys the switch that makes any layer we work with a 3D layer. Now, we've already talked about motion blur, and the motion blur switch is right here. If you look two over, there is this kind of three-dimensional looking cube and a checkbox underneath that. This checkbox, when checked, turns this layer into a three-dimensional layer. Now, that does not mean that all of a sudden this 2D circle is now a three-dimensional sphere. It's not. It's still a two-dimensional circle. But what this allows us to do is it gives us now this Z space transform property. So if I pull up my position, just like we've known how to do, I hit P on the keyboard, notice now there are three parameters here. Our X axis, side to side, our Y axis, up and down, and then our Z axis, which is away from the camera or toward the camera. It looks like it's scaling, but it's actually moving it to and from the camera. So by hitting this three dimensional box, it just gives us that Z axis parameter. Same thing with rotation. We now have X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Let me control Z back until we had just a kind of a regular ball here. Now with this 3D layer checkbox turned on, the layer will also be able to accept lights. Now we haven't talked about lights yet at all in After Effects, but they are a wonderful way to transform our composition and light it just like we would a movie. To add a new light, we can go up to Layer in the menu bar new, light. And when I click on light, our light settings dialog box comes up. We can name our light, which I won't for right now. The important thing here is that we understand the different light types. Spot and point are the two that we're gonna be using throughout this exercise. Parallel and ambient are kind of their own beasts and I'm not gonna cover them in this unit. Spotlights work just like a spotlight would on like a stage. 
before we kind of get into this, I want to just hit OK and show you guys what this means. We want this to cast shadows. Now, this is our light. This cone that it makes, notice if I take it and move it around, it is a three-dimensional light. Imagine this like a light in a studio, and this cone is the amount of spread that the light has. I can click and drag this light around, and notice how when I do, it changes the lighting on the ball. So now that we kind of understand that, I'm gonna go back into my light settings for my spotlight. I can do that by double clicking my spotlight in my layer panel. I can now adjust things like the intensity, the cone angle, the cone feather, and how dark the shadows are from our light. And so what's cool is, though this isn't an actual sphere, we can start to really make it look like one just by using the 3D checkbox and adding a kind of high intensity spotlight. So those are 3D layers and those are lights. We're gonna be using those throughout the entirety of this exercise, but I wanted to use this as just kind of a demo to show you guys how they work. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. You guys can do this with me. Composition, new composition. 1920 by 1080 is great. I'm gonna go ahead and make this comp 30 seconds long. With a black background is fine. I'm gonna call this 3D room. And I'll hit okay. So we're gonna create a 3D room using 2D layers. Let's start with our brick window wall. Drag that into your layer panel. Now I made this in Photoshop for you guys. It's literally a brick wall with a window in it. The window is transparent. Now our temptation is to scale this, but I don't wanna scale it. What I wanna do instead is I want to move it in Z space. Now I'm gonna show you guys a brand new way to view fake 3D layers. If we come over here underneath our composition panel, we have a one view pull down. Toggle that down and we see a whole bunch of different views that we can set for our composition. Now one view makes sense, we just have the one flat two dimensional view, but I want you guys to click on two views horizontal. Now, some of you might be thinking, that looks exactly the same, and you would be right. What I want you guys to do now is turn on the 3D layer checkbox for our brick window wall. Notice now how our left window has changed. To think of this properly, this is viewing the window wall dead on. This over here to our left, notice it says top in the upper left hand corner. We're viewing this from a bird's eye view looking down. This is the window wall layer looking straight down on top of it. So it's flat because it's two dimensional. But notice now we have our Z space. If I grab this blue arrow and move it back and forth, we're actually moving this further or closer to our field of view. And so this is how we're gonna start to craft our room. I'm gonna move this back wall to the back of my composition. Now that I've moved it, I am going to hit S on the layer, and I am gonna scale this down just a little bit, so that way we have some room to work. I'm gonna make this about 70% in size, because we're gonna add the other walls next to it and below it. Great, so now we're gonna use the brick walls JPEG for our other walls and floor. So let's drag the brick walls JPEG into our layer panel. And let's turn on our 3D checkbox. Now it's covering our window wall, which makes sense. 
Look at my composition. Here is the brick wall we just laid down. Here is our window wall. So if I move this behind that layer, you can see now it's moving behind it in 3D space. Now I want to scale this to 70% just like our back wall. And then I want to rotate it by hitting R on the keyboard. I want to rotate it on the Y axis to create our walls. Now I'm going to type in on the Y axis here, 90 degrees. Notice now I have a perpendicular wall to my window wall. I can now take my Z arrow and move this to the side. And notice here, I now have a fake three-dimensional wall coming from my back window wall. And I can do the same thing. Drag my new brick wall layer down, turn on the 3D checkbox, scale it down to 70%, come to rotate it, and rotate it negative 90 degrees, the opposite of the other wall. I'll now take my Z space arrow in my composition panel and I will move it over to the other side. You guys can see now how we're really starting to create a three dimensional room. Now let's go ahead and create the floor. I'm going to drag my brick wall layer in, turn on the 3D checkbox. This time I'm just going to rotate it on the x-axis and rotate it flat. So negative 90 degrees. So now in this composition panel, it looks like it's completely thinned out. And now when I take my Z arrow and drag it down, we can see it starts to come into view. And again, because we're looking at this from the top down over here in our left camera, we're actually just seeing the front face of our floor on the entirety of our image. So let's get some of these other assets in here. Let's take our forest JPEG, for example, and let's drag this at the very bottom of all of our wall layers. Notice now that that allows us to kind of have an outside to our window. But let's make it a 3D layer. Now it's inside of our house. It defaults to the center of our composition here as we can see from our top view. I'm gonna zoom out by just clicking my mouse wheel toward me and I'm gonna push the forest outside like this. Now notice how I can make this go as far back as I want it to depending on how zoomed out I am. The goal here is to give this a sense of parallax. If we think of this square right here, our composition square, as an actual house, the forest, the, the distant trees, would probably be about 30 to 40 feet outside of that. So by bringing this out, we'll create some semblance of parallax as we go to light this and move the camera around. Okay, looking good. Let's go ahead and drag our fire pit in. Let's drag this on top of all of our layers. Make it a 3D layer. Now I want this to be positioned kind of dead center but a little closer to the window. So we're gonna have to scale this down just a little bit. About 60% looks good to me. And I'm going to use my green arrow here, my Y axis, to bring it down to the floor. And you can kind of see how it starts to disappear into our floor wall. That's fine with me. Now obviously these are actual photographs that I've found online. These could easily be hand-drawn assets and environments that you've made for your two-dimensional characters. Okay, let's go and do the same thing with our candle mounts. Let's drag those in. 
Now these candle mounts I've intended to kind of go on the wall over here on both sides. So let's make them three-dimensional objects. You can see how they start to disappear into the wall. That's good. I'll kind of mate those right against. And then we can scale those down accordingly, probably to be maybe 60% as well. I'm going to duplicate this by selecting the layer and hitting Control D on the keyboard. And then I'm going to rotate it the opposite way. Negative 180. And then bring the arrow to the other wall. This now assures us that both candlesticks are on the exact same plane and the exact same height on both walls. So we've now set up our three-dimensional room. There is actual depth, and we'll see that more when we start to play with cameras. Now, lighting this is gonna be a beast in its own. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to use cameras and how to light this, and then I can really make this come together. So take some time, rewatch this in order to get this set up, and then start the next tutorial.